All right, so I'm in Photoshop right now, and I'll show you how to create this wobbly effect. Uh, basically create an animation in Photoshop where the lines are sort of uh, wobbly and alive. And it's a pretty cool thing, actually. So what you want to do is load up, obviously, a new blank canvas in Photoshop. And we're going to need our Layers panel, which I just dragged out here. And we're going to need the Animation panel which you can find up here. I'm gonna bring that out. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I am in you know the frame animation mode. So that's that little fiddly button down here to the bottom right. I'm just gonna click that. So you get the frame view here. And in this little flyout menu I want to select create new layer for each new frame. I like switching that on because every time you create a new layer down here, it's going to create a new frame up here. Alright, but since we already have a new frame here, and since I don't want to paint directly on the background layer, I want to, you know, be able to get some transparency on my illustration when I export it. So I make a new layer. So right now this layer corresponds to this frame here. So everything I draw up in this layer, uh, it's going to be visible in this frame. Alright, let's try it out. So. Let me see, let's just make it simple here. I'm going to draw maybe a face. Beautiful. Maybe with some eyes there. Kind of scary. A uh, little nose there. And guess what? Yep, it's going to have a mouth. Let's make that here. It's grinding the teeth. All right, maybe a little, maybe it's a little tired and ears and maybe some hair let's just make it rough make it dirty make it rough alright what's missing eyebrows of course beautiful alright that's we're sitting right now in layer one and frame one so now I'm gonna create the next illustration here it's gonna be the same but I'm gonna trace on top of this one so it's not gonna be you know, completely the same, which when we play the animation it's gonna make the lines, you know, wobbly. Alright, click this little new frame button down here. Alright, so now nothing really happened uh, apart from, you know, a new, uh, new layer popped up down here. And so what I'm gonna do now is select the first layer and turn the opacity down to around doesn't really matter what it is, but just something low-ish, maybe around 27, I don't know. You could also make it 30 if you like, you know, round numbers, but I like 27. Just kidding. All right, back to frame two. So now the cool thing is, since the opacity here is like 100, you can just you know, zoom in a little bit. You can trace, you can easily trace that line. And you don't have to, you know, be perfect about this. Just don't make just make sure you don't like trace trace like that, for example. Unless you want his eye to like fly in and out when we play the animation. So I'm just gonna do this really rough right now. Alright, nose, eyebrows, the head, the head, ears, hair. He's a nice looking guy. Like myself. <laughs> All right, uh, mouth, 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 and the teeth. There we go. Beautiful. So now you can already see when I switch between frame zero and frame one here, uh, I mean one and two, that it's starting to be wobbly already. Awesome. So you're just gonna make be aware that you can still see the layer one in our frame two here. You know the transparent thing here. So just make sure that when you select frame two, that you go to layer one and boost that up. No, I mean, actually you hide it. Click the eye icon up here so it's only, you know, in frame two, layer two is the only visible layer. And, you know, same thing goes for frame one, that it's only layer one that's visible. You can see it remembers uh, the visibility of the layers when you click back and forth down here. So, you know, just to make sure that when you click layer two, both of them aren't selected because that's going to look that's not going to turn out 
great. So, that's the most important thing to be aware of. So, you know, layer two with frame two selected, just repeat that step one more time. And maybe, I think it's a good idea to always trace uh, layer one, like the first illustration, because if you keep on tracing just the previous illustration, you risk that your illustration will move gradually uh, to one direction if you're not, you know, if you're uh, being too rough on the uh, tracing. So I like to just hide that one and just, you know, oh, it even remembers the opacity. So yeah, frame three selected. Going to do the same thing with the head. You got to be a little patient when you're, you know, working like this. So now I finished the last illustration. And now what I want to do is go down to the animation panel and select all of my frames. Just click the first one, click that, and hold down the shift key and click the last one. And change the speed to maybe 0.1 seconds. I like that, that's a nice speed. And make it loop forever. And you can click play button here to preview it. But first I just want to make sure that with frame 3 selected, I'm just going to hide layer 1. So it's only the illustration in frame 3. Uh, in layer 3 that's uh, visible here. So you can always go through and test it, okay. Frame 1, that one, frame 2, yep, frame 3. So if we play it now, it should look good. There you go, beautiful, alright. Now for the export. Before I export, I select all of them and I just hide the background layer. Alright, and the other thing, I want to get rid of all the surrounding transparency. So I take my crop tool and I just roughly cut away a lot of that because it's kind of unnecessary and it, you might risk that it makes After Effects a little laggy. So it's always good to trim it a little bit. But the animation remains the same. All right, now for the export. I made a batch uh, action for that actually, which will uh, I called it uh, the render, and what it does is, you know, it just remembers my settings. Um, if you're using CS5, it's not going to remember the settings when you make a, an export video action, which is pretty lame, if you ask me. Um, it's actually, you know, a bug. So that's why I'm using Photoshop CS4 right now, because it'll actually remember the settings. So, anyways, if you don't have CS4, you can go to, let me see where it is, uh, no, 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 no. export and render video. That's basically what my action is doing automatically. I'm going to save it on the desktop in the folder that I call export. Choose that. And let's call it face, since we made a face. All right. And how do I want it? Yep, I want a quick time movie and I want it to be animation. 25 second, uh, frames per second, because I'm in Europe. If you're in the States, 30. And looking good. Hit OK to that. The rest of this, that's OK. How do we want it? How do we want it? Document size, that's OK. Da -da 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 -da. And I think we're good to go. Let's try this out. Render. And it should be right there. When I preview it in Quick Look, it's not gonna, it's just gonna be black because, you know, it's transparent. So, but if we load it up in After Effects, it will be visible when we throw on a white background. Okay, just gonna import it real quick here. Let's go throw it into a comp. Let's make a wide solid, looking good, behind that layer. Ka-chang! So right now, it doesn't really loop. And let me show you actually how to loop this real fast. Um, I'm selecting this one and right-clicking on it. And let's say, where is it? Interpret footage main. There's a little option down here uh, in other options called loop. Now, right now it's set to loop one times, but I'm going to set it to max so we don't risk running out of graphic. All right. 
just going to go into the settings of this comp and make it a little longer than 8 frames. Uh, let's make it let's make it one minute. Why don't we? All right, swimming out. So now you can see it actually stops right here, but you can drag this one out, and it's gonna. Let me just see here. All right, the background, okay. So it's just gonna loop for like 999 times, which I'm guessing is sufficient for pretty much any animation you'd be doing. Um, so yeah, let's just preview this. Ain't that cool? So that's how the cookie crumbles.